Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise to the Most High King. Praise to the only wise God. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I'm just sharing this to a couple of groups here. Bear with me. Bear with me. <laughs> Jesus is King of Kings. Jesus is the Lord of Lords. The Most High God. The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the ending. Who was, who is, and who is to come. Bear with me, I'm just sharing this, guys. Praise Yahweh. Praise Jesus. Praise his name. I'm not going to be on here super long. <laughs> really, probably not, but whatever God would have me to do. So <laughs> that's all I'm capable of doing. Nothing more than that and nothing less than that. So we can have joy in our salvation today. We can have joy of the Lord today. Even when life gives us discouragement and the things and people around us give us discouragement, we can put our hope, we can put our trust, we can put our faith in the Lord Most High. There's none like Him. He's the only wise one, the Alpha, the Omega, like I said before, the beginning, the ending, who was, who is, who is to come. No one else compares. Who compares to the name of the Lord? Who created the heavens, the seas, the earth, the universe, all that we see. He's doing exceedingly above all we could think or hope or ask of this season. We just have to stay encouraged in Christ. We just have to push past the negativity of the things of the world. We have to push past all of the discouragement going on around us, all of the opposition going on around us. We have to keep that joy that bubbles up on the inside and knowing that we have salvation given from the King of Kings. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people which God has called and chosen and set apart for such a time as this. No weapon that's ever formed against us is going to be able to prosper this season. When the enemy is coming in our lives like a flood, God's raising up a standard against it, and we are going to be able to take a stand for the name of Jesus Christ unlike we've ever done before. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Bear with me, bear with me. I just want to make sure that we're on here. Just want to make sure that this is working properly. Yep, it is. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Yeah, this phone is a little weird. I don't know if there's comments, but if there is, I can't see them. That's okay. Just making sure. Praise God. He's so faithful to us, and he's so good, and he's so righteous, and he's so just. And we're justified by faith, having redemption in the finished work done at the cross at Calvary. We could put our faith, we could put our hope, we could have put our trust in the name of the Lord, the only saving name, the only one who saves from the beginning to the ending. He knows all of our days are numbered and there's a lot of things going on around us, a lot of um, enemy tactics and enemy snares and plots and schemes and we can't allow ourselves, we cannot afford to become distracted and to become debilitated in faith in any way this season, but we really need to push past our own comfort level and step out into the things that God's called us. You know, it's really not that crazy of a thing to do. We just got to do it with blind faith and we're getting comfortable with being uncomfortable this season, which causes us to rely on the Holy Spirit for our direction, for our guidance, for our wisdom, even more and more. As we see the day of the Lord approaching, we need to continue gathering, and He's going to gather His elect one day from the four corners of the earth, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached 
to the uttermost parts of the earth, and then the end shall come. And the day of the Lord is coming as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away. Everything in this earth is going to be burned up with a fervent heat. Everything is going to be tried by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. All the works that are in the earth are going to be tried and tested by fire. And the only things that remain forever are the eternal things of God. And it may seem like all these other things hold such weight of importance. But in the end, in reality, and here and now, the eternal things are what matters. That's all that matters. Eternity. It, it's everlasting life, which we have in Jesus Christ, right? And we get saved from dead works. We pass from death to life. And now we serve a living and true creator who paid a ransom for all of mankind that whosoever shall believe on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And because of that, we have access to enter into um, the Holy of Holies with boldness, with a boldness in our spirit. We have access because of what Jesus did on the cross. Isn't that an amazing thing? So why aren't we utilizing the key of faith in prayer and really taking our requests to the Lord and making our our hearts desires and our prayer petitions and requests known in the presence of the Lord and he will open doors that no man can shut with the key of David according to the book of Revelation and he will shut doors that no man can open and no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him and we love because he first loved us and everyone that's born of God overcomes greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world even with all this uh, warfare whatever you want to call it the internal struggles that we go through in our daily lives he is for you not against you all truth is within him and we want to get to the fullness of where he's called us to be this season. We want to just press forward, press, push, press past all things that would try to oppose the call and the plan and the destiny that God has for our lives. And when he's given you his seal of approval, he will give you the strength to take those steps of faith and do things that you'd never imagine yourself doing. But when you step into that, it's a place of fullness in your calling and you're on the edge and the end of yourself. That's where faith kicks in and grace empowers you in ways that you never imagine. And then we just continue doing it over and over and over again. We're going from glory to glory, from one level of glory to another level of glory the next season and one level of faith in one season and a completely other level of faith in another season. But nevertheless, we have joy as we're going through what it is we're going through. Yes, many are going to be the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. <laughs> and a lot of people want to take the beginning part of scriptures about the hardships and how hard it is and not get to the end part of the scriptures that it talks about victory in Christ Jesus we can live victorious in Christ Jesus we are overcomers everyone born of God overcomes the world and the things of this life and the things of the world Jesus defeated the enemy's power and because of that we can live completely victorious and a deliverance is and a sanctification cleansing process is taking place in each and every one of us as we trust in the name of the Lord and we keep seeking the Lord for our own personal one-on-one -on -one deliverance it's healing it's salvation it's restoration this is a season of harvest that we're going to reap what has been sowed hallelujah those who sow to the spirit reap everlasting life but sowing to the flesh leads to corruption and destruction and many people around us are going in the way that's broad 
Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the way that leads to life. Narrow, the way that's uncommon, the way that seems more difficult in the moment, but pays off for all eternity. And one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day with the Lord. It's beyond our human understanding. It's beyond our human capacity to understand God's timing and how it all works in eternity. Like it's hard for us to even fathom eternity because we are stuck in this timeline on earth. Everything's about time, right? We wake up in the morning and our alarm clock goes off and what time is it? I have to be here at this time and there at that time. But God's word says in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is a season, there is a time for everything under the the heavens and under the sun. There is an appointed time. There's an appointed timing. And God has a specific timeline. And if we choose to be weighed down by the pleasures and the cares of this world and of this life over and choose that over our calling in Christ, it's almost like it, it, it pauses. It has an effect on that timeline that God's perfect will was in. You know what I mean? We could have God's perfect will. We could have God's acceptable will. His permissible will. Or his good will. But we want his perfect will. And we want to be on God's clock. We want to be on God's timeline. And so when he's telling us to do something, the best thing we could possibly do is pray for him to give us the strength so that he can carry it out through us. Because the time is short. And the time is at hand. And... The day of the Lord is approaching and the night is coming when no man can work. And if that, we really allow that to to hit our spirit, there's an urgency, especially with what we just saw in the world with all the churches shutting down and everything that we just witnessed, everybody having to be completely separated. We can see that there's an urgency to get the good news, the message of the gospel out to all the uttermost parts of the earth. We are called to be witnesses, to testify, to testify of the glorious gospel of Christ and the grace of God, which has saved us from the the enemy's tactics, from the darkness we've been pulled out and translated into the kingdom of light. And who wouldn't want to share that? Who wouldn't want to get out and, and praise him? Who wouldn't want to worship him? because of all this that he's done. And when we understand the depth of his love for us and what he truly did for us on the cross at Calvary, our heart's desires begin to change and we stop living for ourselves and we begin to die to our own selfish desires and we begin to live for Christ. And that is the most empowering thing that could ever take place in somebody's life is becoming a new creature in Christ, becoming a new creation in Christ Jesus. All things have become new and all things are made by him and all things are made for him we were created to give our creator glory we were created to point people to the creator and say it's not i but christ in me the hope of glory all of the earth around us is waiting for the manifestations it's groaning for the manifestation of the sons of god because they need the message of salvation which is only in christ jesus it's the only saving name It's the only way that we can be saved. According to Acts 4.12, there's no other name given among mankind whereby we must be saved. Not we should be saved. We might. We must be saved. We must be saved. You know, like John the Baptist was just out in the wilderness crying, you know, the... I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord. He saw something coming in the future and there was an urgency in John the Baptist to warn the people. There was an urgency that swelled up in John the Baptist to tell the people and baptize them unto repentance. And we need an urgency. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Amen. Amen, Marty. 
and there is its glory to God and there is an urgency that's bubbling up on the inside of us it cannot be contained it's a fire that's shut up in our bones like half the time I don't even know what to say on here personally but just I know that God wants me to activate that live button and just speak what's on his heart and we don't always have to have a clear blueprint with an instruction manual and a lot of us are praying for specifics and I believe that specifics are good in the kingdom we need specifics and we need order and we need direction and we need a plan but sometimes you know the Holy Spirit just spontaneously shows up and redirects that entire plan that we had mapped out because like I said it's his plan it's his way that's unfolding it's his timing how it's unfolding and it's his ultimate plan and purpose for our lives that he has a destiny that he has prepared for you he has a destiny that he has prepared for me and no matter what trials no matter what persecutions no matter what afflictions no matter what hardships are going on the word says that we've been given all authority in his name we've been given to cast out demons we've been given authority to tread on serpents and on scorpions over all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm us and so with this virus it's really been a separation of the wheat from the tares and there's a divine exposure happening and we're being tested in where we're at it must be exposed so we could even see where we're at sometimes God will allow an uncomfortable situation for us to be wedged right into it so that something can manifest from that and be exposed and then there's a reaction from that event and from that reaction and exposure it lets us know where our faith really lies, where our faith really rests. But those who abide under the shadow of the Almighty can take refuge in the Lord as protector. When thousands are falling on our right hand side and several thousands are falling on our left side, we will not be afraid that the terror is coming by night or the arrow that's, that's attempting to strike us in the middle of the day. We're not going to be afraid and fear is coming from a lack of faith. And if any man have not, let him ask of God and he'll, he will receive. And God freely gives all things to those who ask. And so it's not good for us to judge other people for their lack in faith, but let us pray for those people that we see that and have compassion of what they're going through and show them the love of Christ. And yeah, we can definitely correct them in that area, but they need the grace to be able to receive that. And they need a personal revelation from their own personal experience from their own personal manifestation and exposure and situation they were in to show them, to show them where they're at. And as we read the word more and more, it's a mirror. And that also helps us to become transparent with God and see where we're at and compare our own thoughts with the word and cast down every thought that's in our mind that's oppositional or that's against what the word says. Because the word of God is the final authority and that settles it in the end. And it settles it here and now for us. So we just really have to have compassion on one another as a body of believers and show the love of Christ Jesus to one another and pray for people that we see that are still living in fear and confusion. Because it's spiritual. They don't know how to get out. Some of them don't know how to fight their way out of that by faith in prayer and they need your prayers they're relying on your prayers they're relying on people that are intercessors what if there was no intercessors in the world how many of these people that we know very well that are very well known in the body of Christ how many would there be today if there wasn't somebody backing them supporting them and carrying them with the burden of prayer and intercession is going to be so important this upcoming season and to, for us to just be sober, be vigilant, be on guard, be aware, be al awake, be alert. Because our adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 
May, inferring that it's not everyone that he's able to devour. It's not everyone. And one way that he's devouring people is deception. And another way that he's devouring people is the spirit of pride. And another way that he's devouring people very commonly is offense. And so we can't allow the spirit of offense to take us out this season or our own pride or our own selfishness. But we, you know, through this fire, God is refining us through these trials that we're going through. God is refining us through these hardships that we're going through. He is melting away the broken pieces and he is welding it to his love. And he is, we are his workmanship, fitly joined together as one body made up of many members. And we are being constructed by the hand of a mighty, powerful God, the creator of all things, and he's chipping away pieces that don't belong, and he's adding and creating in us things that were never there before. A new boldness is arising in the body of Christ. A new strength is coming to the body of Christ, and that Holy Ghost fire cannot be put out. It cannot, but it's up to us. We're responsible to keep the fire lit. We are responsible to keep the fire lit. Hallelujah. I wish I could be on here all night. I <laughs> technically could, but <laughs> there's more kingdom work to do in other ways off camera. A lot of it actually, but God's grace is sufficient. Um, you know, so I just wanted to get on here because there is an urgency. There is an urgency to just keep the fire that's in us lit. And we can do that by maintaining our personal relationship with Christ Jesus and making sure that we abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We don't have to live in fear when we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. We don't have to live in confusion when we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. We don't have to live in doubt or discouragement when we are abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. Our strength comes from within. Our strength comes from the Lord, and it comes solely from the Lord. No matter what we're up against, He will always be with us. He will always, even to the end. And it may seem like we're alone. We may feel lonely, but we don't live by feelings. We live by faith, and we, we live by faith in what God says. And if God says we're never alone, then our feelings could lie to us. And some people are led by the soulish realm. So I apologize. We've got some advertisements. Um, some people are led by their soulish realm. And the soul consists of so many different things. Our emotions, our own willpower to do certain things, and our mindset. So some people are literally ruled by their soulish realm. They operate, they make decisions, and they behave based on what their soul is telling them to do not what the Holy Spirit is telling them to do. And the more we're used to uh, responding for the soulish desires, then the more easy it is to continue and lean in that direction. So the more we yield to the Holy Spirit, the more we get used to dying to the flesh, and the more we get used to that pain of dying to the flesh, and we begin to actually even thrive a little bit because of the pain of dying to the flesh, because it's exciting, because we're doing something for the Lord, for His glory. And He gives us that ability to go so much further than we would be able to do. We can't do it without the Holy Spirit. And when we see people struggling around us, we need to show them compassion and we need to show them the love of Jesus Christ. And we need to pray for them by faith, believing that God is a restorer and he is giving back so much more to people than what the enemy had originally stolen. All of those years that the locust has stolen are being restored in this season, in this hour. And so... We're redeeming the time because these days are evil days. Yes, they are evil days. We are putting on the full armor of God so that we will be able to stand because people are falling away left and right. People are falling away from the faith. And it says to, in the book of Revelation to not depart from our first love, to not become lukewarm, but to stay on fire with our first love 
Jesus Christ, and that means maintaining that personal relationship. And if we're a child of God, we feel Him calling us. We feel Him pulling at our hearts. And it's His grace and it's His mercy and it's His love that's pulling us. Pulling us out of that situation we were sinking and into the boat to take rest. To take rest. He is our refuge. He is our fortress. Even when we don't see it, He's working. Even when we don't feel it, He's working. He never stops, and He never stops working. So we may feel discouraged. We may feel depressed. We may feel fearful and anxiety-ridden. But the truth is, God's Word is the final authority. And we have the ability, by the authority that Christ has given us, in the power of the Holy Spirit to cast down every thought, every imagination, every stronghold that's coming up against the knowledge of God. And we have the ability to bring every single thought into captivity to the obedience of the mind of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and the Word of God. We have the ability, when we get a thought of fear, to say, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but He has given me power. He has given me love. He has given me a sound mind. We have the ability when we feel depressed to say the joy of the Lord is my strength. Or to say for the garment of heaviness, I will put on the garment of praise. Or to say this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Rejoicing is a choice. It's not based on life circumstances. And if we're just so tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and left and right and up and down in four different directions based on feelings, based on external circumstances and situations, we're not being led of the Spirit and we're not living a lifestyle of faith. And what is faith? It's the evidence of things that we cannot see and it's the substance of things that we're hoping for. So if we always live by what we see, feel, can taste, can touch, like by the sensory things that we see right there in the present moment, then how can our faith ever grow? But our faith is truly molded as we go through trials, when there's an uncertainty by what we see around us. It looks uncertain. It looks like there may not be a positive outcome. But that's when we can lean on the word that says God is working all things together for my good. For those who love him and live according to his purpose, God is working all things together for the good. And that's when we can lean on the Lord. We can lean on the word when we don't see it, when we don't feel it like this song says. He is a way maker. He makes a way when there seems to be no way. He's making a way out for you right now as we speak. We just have to keep believing and we have to keep declaring and we have to keep proclaiming and we have to keep worshiping and we have to keep praising and we have to keep praying and just resting under the shadow of the Almighty. And sometimes we need to just be still and know that He is God and He is sovereign. We may not agree with what happened in that life situation, but that doesn't mean we have a reason to walk away from the Lord just because we don't understand or we don't agree with what happened. We're maturing. We're developing. We're growing in Christ. We trust in the Lord with all of our heart, and we lean not on our own understanding. There's going to be a lot of things that come up in life that we don't understand. There's going to be a lot of things that come up in life that could leave us discouraged or even seemingly in despair or hopeless. But we have to stay in Christ and we have to stay encouraged. We are in Christ already. But Thank you, Maria. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I just did it. Um, we have to stay encouraged in Christ Jesus because we are in Him. We're abiding in the vine. We're maintaining that personal relationship that we have with Him. And when we abide in the vine, we bear fruit. There's good things that come out of us abiding in the vine and keeping that personal one-on-one, -on -one, first-hand relationship with Jesus that we have over everything else. We can't let 
these distractions and these shortcomings in other people offend us or things that are just really discouraging that other people may say. You know, the enemy uses people. He tries to take hold of them and use them like a robot and, and become a host inside of them and possess them in those moments to say things that are hurtful to you, to say things that are slanderous, to say things that are blasphemous, to try to get you weighed down, to try to get you discouraged, to stop doing what you're called to do. It, it's a tactic and it needs to be exposed right now in the name of Jesus. We are not battling flesh and blood. And as we mature in Christ, we recognize more and more how the battle belongs to the Lord. And some things are for us to leave with the Lord. Some battles we may have tried to take on that were not appointed. And when they go wrong and they go badly, we wonder why and then blame God. Well, he said, I didn't, I didn't give you that assignment. Did you ask me first? Did you ask me first? And you know, we just really got to be in tune with the Holy Spirit and what the Holy Spirit's telling us to do and what direction the Holy Spirit is telling us to go in. And then we'll be okay. Then we will be safe. We are under the shadow of the Almighty. This plague will not touch us in Jesus' name. No virus will touch us in the name of Jesus Christ. And we don't have to live a lifestyle based off emotion, based off hysteria, based off panic, based off chaos, based off of fear. Especially the media. We have to be really mindful and careful because of what they're trying to project onto us, like so much toxicity. We have to guard our hearts. We have to guard our minds. We have to guard our spirits. We've been given something that's so precious from heaven, from the heavenly courts. It's eternally the Lord. We belong to the Lord. We are God Almighty's masterpieces of, of work. He's, he's knit us together in our mother's womb. And we have to stop taking salvation so lightly and taking what he's telling us to do so lightly. But we have to really have a reverence and we have to have an awe and we have to have an honor for the things of the Lord. It's precious. The saints are precious in his sight. We really have to be careful how we talk about one another. We really have to be careful how we treat one another as brothers and sisters and really just show love and pray for one another. Only pay for what you need with Hallelujah. Let me just get this back on. All these commercials, guys, this is really, it's really crazy. <laughs> oh, there we go. But we just got to really be careful. We got to keep our spirits guarded. We have to really just be with the Lord number one and everything else that we have need of we will receive and when we seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness all these things that we have need of shall be added and we can laugh off these things that are going on around us i mean i work as a peer recovery advocate helping people who are struggling with addiction to find their way to recovery. And this hopeless amounts of stories that I hear on a repetitive daily basis, you know, could make somebody that's not wired to handle that very depressed, very sad. You know what I mean? And that's why I need to get my strength from the Lord every single day so I could be an encouragement to these people who are literally hopeless day and night. So day and night, night and day, he's making us a house of prayer. He's making us a powerhouse for his kingdom. He's strengthening the broken parts. He's strengthening those weak parts, those areas where we used to fall so easily into the Satan's traps. He is strengthening and we're saying, no, not anymore. We're saying, no, not anymore. And we're going in a brand new direction. And Satan is just baffled right now. He's just baffled right now by our response. He's trying to come up with another tactic, tactic to pull us in. But it shall not prosper if we lean on the Lord. We all have decisions to make because there are multitudes of people who are in the valley of decision right now. And we all have a decision to make each and every single day. Choose ye this day who you will serve. Who will you serve? 
is the greatest question. Some people serve their jobs. Some people serve their cell phones. Some people serve money. Choose this day whom you shall serve. As for me and my household, my generations, my family, we will serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Of Nazareth. He's the only saving one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Yeah, he's the only redeeming one. He's the only savior. There's no one else but him. He is the source of everything we have need of. And when we use these vices and we follow our soulish desires, we cave in so easily and we take so lightly this great salvation that he died to give us at the cross. And if we would just sit on the floor sometimes and if we would just kneel and, and bow our head and purposely reflect on where we used to be before knowing him and play the worship music sometimes and, and listen to the song, What Can Wash Away My Sins? Nothing But the Blood of Jesus. And I'm watching a video of him getting bloodied and beaten and bruised and I'm brought to tears. And if we could just continue propelling ourselves forward to remain in that place. Yes, sometimes it takes a stirring up of the gift of God. It says to stir up the gift of God. Like we have the ability when we don't feel like it to stir up the gift of God. We have the ability to be rejoicing in a day that we should be um, depressed. We have the ability to stir up the gift of God and to declare the word over our circumstances. We have the time and we have the ability to kneel and to sit on the, or to sit on the floor, or even just lay flat out, prostrate, whatever you call it, flat out on the floor and just seek his face and remember where we were before we knew the Lord and really meditate on his loving kindness. That is the transformation. That is the purpose. That is the destiny. We can watch a ton of instructional teachings, and they're great. They're great. We need people who are in the body of Christ who are instructing other people. We need teachers and all of that. But one moment with the Savior of mankind, Jesus Christ, and we're transformed. He pulls that old desire right up and out, up and out. And we get delivered in his presence. We don't always need somebody to lay hands on us. Sometimes we do. And that's scriptural as well. That's why we really got to have discernment so that we can be directed in the right way of what to do in certain circumstances. And he will show us which direction to take when we're uncertain. It may not feel like he's answering us right away, but in the way of peace, is the way of the Lord. In the way of disturbance is against the way of the Lord. He may not answer with an audible voice always, but sometimes he can. And that audible really is just a spoken word into our heart in a moment in time that we need it. Like for instance, things weren't going so great in my walk with God at this, in this one season of life, right? And I had a, an opportunity to share my testimony somewhere. And I said, well, God, how am I going to do this? Look at me. Look at the state that I'm in right now. Look at the things that I'm doing right now that are against you. Look at the way that I'm living. You know my struggles. You know that I am not the right one. <laughs> well, did God make a mistake then? Did he choose the wrong one to give me the opportunity? Did he choose the wrong one to give that opportunity to? No, I woke up one morning and I heard in my heart, Make grace alive. Meaning my, a rhema word is just a now word. A word that's right here, right now, that we need in that very present moment. Very present moment. And he is an ever-present help in a time of trouble. And it quickened me. It quickened me. It's good. We need to read the word of God. And that's important too. When we can get a, a now revelation from his word, from reading it. But sometimes he just, he speaks a word right into your life and he quickens you. And a powerful revelation comes that breaks shackles, that breaks chains, and that brings a holy conviction. 
and he has clothed us in royalty. I mean, this is unbelievable. It's not something to take lightly. We really just have to have an awe and a reverence and just get back to that place of reflecting on his goodness and, and his loving kindness and just wanting to have the desire to tell everybody. Because <laughs> I remember when I first found Christ or Christ found me or I found Christ, which is it? Some people will say one thing, some people will say another, but before the foundations of the world was even framed, he knew us when we were in our mother's womb. He predestined us for such a time as this and for us to be granted salvation, healing, freedom, deliverance, power. Hallelujah. So in that moment, I said, wow, how come all of the years of my life at that time was 27? <laughs> how come nobody told me about Jesus? Wow, this is amazing. I said, I got to tell everybody about this. <laughs> That's exactly what I proceeded to do. And so we just got to keep encouraged. We just got to keep that fire and not lose our first love. Our first love. We love other people because he first loved us. He is our first love. Wow. I love you guys so much. I have, <laughs> I have some other kingdom assignments that I've just neglected those for this. And this is what God would have me to do. But I'm praying to get more on live videos. And so it's happening. By faith, it's just happening. But you know, God is for us. He's not against us. And He's doing an amazing thing this season. And we just have to keep ourselves in His presence. And that's the key and that's the answer to everything that we're so worried about, to everything that we're looking for answers about, to everything that we're so shaken up and scattered about. That nervous system would begin to calm down if we just spent a little bit more time in his presence his peace is above all understanding his peace heals anxiety disorders his peace heals nervous system conditions his peace heals insomnia in the name of jesus christ if we would just go to the main source of everything that we have a need for hallelujah i pray for Jaleel right now? Yes, I will. I will pray for you. Hold on a second. I just cancel all tremors by the blood of Jesus. I pray for a reversal of any effects of that medicine by the blood of Jesus Christ. Any bad negative effects from any vaccines be broken right now and reversed. All toxins come out of him in Jesus' mighty name. Or any door that's been opened from... from... from taking the vaccine. Sorry, Julia, I don't want to blow up your spot, but any doors that are open from this vaccine, Lord, or from any decisions he's made, let them be closed now. All occultism is broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, that you've translated him from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Thank you that he is a child of the most high God. Thank you for your fire, Lord. Thank you for a baptism of fire over Jaleel and the gifts of tongues and let the Spirit of God give the utterance in Jesus' name. Be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray for Maria in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that you're strengthening her and you're giving her a testimony to tell other people and you're just helping her through any tough times that she may be going through. And I just see you like in your room a lot. <laughs> I don't know what that means but Maria I just see that you're like in your room a, a lot or that's where you're you know that's where all this illumination is coming from and and God's just going to speak to you as you begin to close yourself off and be receptive to listening and he's going to illuminate the path that's right and give the answers to the questions that you've been asking him from uh, that personal relationship and I just see that you're journaling you you're journaling some things that have happened from your personal relationship with the Lord and that's a great thing to journal hallelujah hallelujah Lord I pray that you would stir up those creative outlets that are within Maria 
Stir up that gift for music, Lord. Even download new heavenly sounds in her in the name of Jesus. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I seal this by faith. I seal this by faith. Hallelujah. He's a way maker. Hallelujah. He is a miracle worker. That is who he is. That is who he is. So please just stay encouraged. Um, don't allow the things of the world to creep in and to cause fear and to cause unrest and turmoil, but just keep the peace of God and uh, stay in his presence and everything will be joyful. It'll be stable in Christ. Our security is in Christ. Our solidity is in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Anybody that doesn't know Christ and would like to, to know him, just say, Jesus, I confess right now that I am a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. I wholeheartedly believe that you were crucified, you died, you were buried, and you rose again for the forgiveness of my sins. Jesus, I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior right now and right here. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Fill me with the Holy Spirit, with power and with fire. Help me to testify and be a witness to all nations. To my friends and family, Lord, help use my story to point them to you, Lord. To give you glory. Use me for your glory. Use my story, Lord, for your glory. I'm covered in the blood of the Lamb. I'm chosen. I'm forgiven. In Jesus' name. Anoint my hands to heal. Anoint my eyes to see spiritual things that you want to show me. Anoint my mind to retain the scripture and to understand your word. Give me wisdom and direction and divine assignments all throughout my life, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. And anyone suffering from migraines, migraine headaches are being healed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise you, Lord. Anxiety is lifting. Heaviness is lifting in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise Jehovah. People who are waiting on finances and are fearful about not having enough funds just to live. Jehovah Jireh is your provider. And the book of Deuteronomy says that God has given our hands the ability to create wealth. Let's use it for his kingdom and believe him for it and touch and agree. We had touch and agree for divine health. In Jesus' mighty name. In the book of Joshua, it says that God has good plans for our lives to prosper us and let us to be in good health. Even as our soul prospers, let us be in good health. Let our soul prosper and let us be in good health, Lord. In Jesus' name, we touch and agree. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Witchcraft attacks are being broken by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, every witchcraft and occult attack that's coming on you, that's causing symptoms, is lifting. It's exposed right now, and the great physician is our healer. In Jesus' name, Lord, thank you. We pray for a spiritual operation right now. People with kidney disorders and liver disorders, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People with organ failure, be healed in Jesus' name. Speak to your body, lay hands on your body and, and speak a creative miracle. Speak a regeneration of the cells right now. He can do it and he will and he has because of what happened at the cross. Past tense, we are healed because of what happened at the cross. So just believe and receive and press in and stir up the gift. Stir up the gift of God that's in us. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People with heart defects are being healed in Jesus' name. People with ankle pains and leg pain is being healed. The restless leg syndrome in the name of Jesus. We bind and cast out every demonic force of evil that would try to ensnare the body of Christ. That would try to stop the body of Christ from her God-given destiny. In Jesus' name, we push forward towards the mark of the high calling that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can move us. Nothing can stop us. Nothing can shift us out of place. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yeshua. Praise Yeshua HaMashiach. El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Rapha, our mighty healer. <laughs> There's so much joy in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy and pleasures that last forever. See, the worldly pleasures that are sinful last only for a moment. And they come with a sorrow afterwards. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Great gain. And He gives us what, what we need. He may not always give us what we want, but He knows what we need more than we know what we need. So we really have to trust in His wisdom. And the book of Proverbs is a great book that talks about understanding and wisdom. Hallelujah. So, you know, it's important to pray for God to fill us, if we haven't been yet, with the Holy Spirit. And because with that comes fire, with that comes power to be a witness. And we're empowered to share our faith with other people. We're empowered to pray for the sick and see them healed and made whole. So pray for the gift of the Holy Spirit and pray for God to anoint your hands to cast out demons. By faith, just speak it. Pray for God to anoint your hands to heal the sick, to cast out devils and for miracles to happen. And, you know, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. He will give us the desires of our heart, but we have to activate faith with action and faith without works is dead but really the action part of it is our faith that's working in action I always thought really it was more good works happen because we have faith but really our faith is actually moving and that causes us to just live out what we're here to do it's a little bit of a different context that I see it now in. you know until God shows you something personally and it's activated and actively working in your life in that moment, you see it a different way in that moment than you saw it prior to that moment. So faith without works is dead. It's the working of our faith. Our faith is working in an action form. And because of that, we're living out the plan that God has for us, and it's unfolding. And we may not have all the details, but we can't allow that to make us weary or weighed down or worried. We just have to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, like I said before, and leaning not on our own understanding. Because that means, that means we're not always going to understand in life what's happening or why, but just trust Him. He knows best for us. He created us. He knows best. So hopefully this brings somebody peace tonight. Man, I could just probably stay on here for how <laughs> much longer, but I probably should be responsible and organize some things that I'm going to need for tomorrow night. So if anybody has any more prayer requests later on, you can put them in the comments of this video and I will pray over them and believe God as long as they are in alignment with God's word, I will touch and, and pray and agree for them and believe with you for them. In Jesus' name, I pray that this bless somebody. <laughs> stay lit, stay joyful, stay encouraged in Jesus' name. Love you all. Amen and amen. See you soon. God willing, again. <laughs>